Hi guys, welcome back to ABOC Studio and you are here with Natalie. As you can see, here's the footage of how I put on this skirt so that it snapped perfectly to my body. I tightened the drawstring, hide it, then put the excess fabric of the waist all the way to the back. When I first post pictures of this skirt on Instagram, some ask me how I make it fit so nicely. This is it. Now first, let's take a look at tools and materials. To start off, we're going to use this 6mm hook to work up a chain. And this chain should be long enough so that when you stretch it all out and wrap it around the largest place on your hip, it should fit perfectly. So basically, if you're making this skirt for someone else, you will need their hip measurement and then the length of your stretch out chain should be exactly the same as that measurement. So to make a chain, first you need a slip knot and you're gonna hold your yarn like this. This is the tail of your yarn and this is your working yarn. Put this working yarn on the tail to create this loop like that. And then bring again bring this working yarn from the back into that loop that you have and bring out another loop and then tight. And that is your slip knot, okay? I like to make it quick and I'm just gonna hold it like this, make a loop with two of my finger, pull the working yarn through that loop and tight. That's another way to make a slip knot. Now you put the slip knot on your hook and close it to the size of the hook, okay? We're gonna start making chain by just yarn over and pull through. Every time you yarn over and pull through, you make a chain loop like that, okay? So just yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. Don't work too tight and try to keep all the chain loop nice and even, okay? And you're gonna just keep working until your chain is long enough. And remember that you need to stretch it out to get the, the right length. So this is your chain and when you measure it, you need to stretch it out like this, okay? Okay. Okay, so once you have the chain that fit perfectly to the hip, we're gonna add three more chain, okay? So, one, two, and three. Now we're gonna join this chain into the perfect round. And we have to carefully do this because if you randomly join the chain, there's a high chance that the round will be twisted and there's no good working in a twisted round. And so, what you do is that you put this working yarn above and away like this and then find the back of the chain. So the front of the chain has its chain shape like little V and then the back of the chain has little bumps on its chain, okay? So you're gonna turn to the back of the chain like this and hold on to this end, okay? Just find the back of the chain all face up just keep it, just keep the back of the chain face up like this all the way until the end, like that. And then when you get to this end, bring the front up like this, the front with little V's, right? And here is where we're gonna join this chain into the perfect round, okay? What you wanna do is that you insert your hook into the first chain, the first V, 
and under this very top loop of the V this is the back loop the top loop insert your hook into this top loop like that okay you can see that now we have two loops on our hook so now you just gonna yarn over and pull through and that is how you join the chain into the round with a slip stitch okay from now on we're not gonna use this six millimeter hook anymore okay we're gonna switch it to the five millimeter there we go five millimeter hook okay you put it back into the loop and now we're gonna chain two one two okay for the first round we're gonna work double crochet into each chain until the end and the first double crochet we're gonna place it right into this next chain that next to this first chain the first chain that we slip stitch to join the round and then we chain two right here right so the next chain under this top loop of the second of the next V is where we want to place our first double crochet to double crochet you yarn over to kind of have two loops on your hook insert your hook into the, the next chain under the top loop and then with this working yarn you draw our loop to have three loops on your hook again yarn over and pull this working yarn through two loops now you have two loops on your hook again you're gonna yarn over and pull through two last loop like that and that is our first double crochet okay we're gonna repeat the same thing work double crochet into this next chain yarn over insert your hook under the top loop of the next V draw our loop yarn over pull through two loop and yarn over pull through two loop okay and we're just gonna repeat that work double crochet into each chain until the end of this round right here when we have two loops left i will meet you right there to show you what to do next okay you can see that here i have one two three chain left to work in and I'm just gonna do that this one and then this last one okay okay so at this point I recommend beginners to count the number of stitches you have on the first row and here you can see this is the chain two that we made at the beginning of this row so you count from this stitch and just one two three four five until this last stitch and find out how much stitches you have on the first row you should write this number down and because we're gonna keep the same number of stitches on the letter rows and it's important for you to keep counting of the number of stitches after each row keep it the same number so the shape of your skirt would be nice and even now moving on we're gonna join this first row together to finish the round and to do that we're gonna insert our hook into this first stitch you can see here this is the chain two and this is your first stitch on top of the first stitch you will see this V right here and you want to insert the hook under this V like this right and you're gonna yarn over and pull out a loop then pull that same loop through the loop that you already have on your hook like that and we're gonna hold on to the hook and the work right here and pull to close the slip knot and that's how you join this first round with a slip stitch and it's very important to really tight and close this slip stitch so remember not to skip that part okay 
Now before we move on to the second round, we're going to chain two, one and two. And then turn our work from the right to the left, like that, okay? For our second round, we're going to work front post and back post double crochet. And it's very similar to double crochet except for where you insert your hook. Normally, we will insert a hook on top of the stitch under the V like this, but for front post and back post double crochet, we're going to insert our hook around the post of the stitch, which is basically the body of the stitch, okay? So here, this is the body of the stitch. I'm going to first show you how to front post double crochet with this stitch, okay? As usual, you're going to yarn over, insert a hook from the front and around the stitch like this and then yarn over, pull our loop to have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two and that is how we work front post double crochet now with the next stitch we're going to work back post double crochet and it's very similar yarn over but now we're going to insert our hook from the back around the stitch like that yarn over pull, pull our loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and that is our back post double crochet okay now again front post double crochet yarn over insert a hook from the front around the stitch draw our loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and then back post double crochet Yarn over, insert a hook from the back and around the stitch, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Like that, okay? I'm gonna show you one more time. Front post double crochet, yarn over, insert a hook from the front and around the stitch, the body of the stitch, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And now back post double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook from the back around the body of the stitch, like that, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, okay? And that's how we work front post and back post double crochet. We're gonna repeat just the same thing until the end of this round when we have about two stitches left and I will show you how it's like okay so you can see this is the back post double crochet so next we're gonna work front post so my last stitch is a back post double crochet but your last stitch might be a front post double crochet and that doesn't really matter because our number of stitches could be different okay so just go with what you have left so mine it's back post okay. that's my last stitch and now again we're gonna finish this round by joining it with a slip stitch you will see here it's your chain 2 at the beginning of the round and to join this round we're going to insert a hook under the V of this first stitch right next to the chain 2 here okay so this stitch on top of it you will find this V insert your hook right under that V take both loops you're going to yarn over and pull our loop and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook and remember to tight and close the slip knot, okay? Now, again, we're gonna chain two, one and two, then turn our work from the right to the left, like that, okay? On our third round, we're not gonna work front post and back post double crochet anymore. We're gonna work the normal double crochet, and so we insert our hook under the V on top of each stitch. You will find V's here and this is the first V so we're gonna insert a hook right under that okay and again double crochet yarn over insert your hook insert your hook right under the V take both loops draw our loop 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just gonna keep repeating the same process. Work double crochet into each stitch until the end. And then I'll meet you right here at the end of this row to show you how it's like, okay? Okay, you can see that I have three stitches left to work in. One, two, three. Or here, one, two, three, right? I'm gonna do that. And then this last one, double crochet. Okay, now again, we're gonna finish this round by joining it with a slip stitch. And you'll find this first stitch right next to this chain two. You insert a hook into this first stitch under the V on top of it draw our loop draw that loop through the loop on your hook and then close the slip stitch now again we're gonna chain two turn our work work double crochet into each stitch and then we're gonna repeat pretty much the same process so you can follow the pattern that I put on the screen for you, okay? I'm at the end of row 10 and you can see here that I have uh, three stitch left to work in one two three Okay, and after row 10 we're gonna start creating the slip for the tie lace from row 11 So in case you want the slit to start a little lower You can repeat the same process to end longer this part before we Before you moving on with the pattern and create the slit from row 11, okay? Now I'm gonna finish this round. And join the round with a slip stitch into this first stitch. Close the slip stitch. And again, we're gonna chain two. But from row 11, we're gonna loosen up our second chain a little bit, okay? And you don't need to understand why we loosen up this chain now because I'm gonna explain it later. So you loosen up a little bit and yarn over, pull through. You will see that the second chain will, will be a little bit bigger than this first chain. And as usual, we turn our work and then we're just gonna work double crochet into each stitch across until the end of this round and I will meet you right in the end, okay? Okay, I'm at the end of row 11 and I have uh, two stitches left to work in. I'm gonna just finish that. Okay, from now to create this slit, we're not gonna slip stitch to join the round anymore. And so we're just gonna chain two and again loosen up our second chain. You can see that the second chain is bigger than the first chain. And here we're gonna turn our work. Now from row 12, we're gonna work our first stitch into the second stitch. So we're not gonna work in this first stitch because we're not working in the round anymore and this chain two, we count as a stitch. And so this first stitch right here already have this chain two. So our first double crochet, we place into the second stitch like this. Okay. And we're gonna work double crochet into each stitch 
until this end and meet me right here in the end so that I can show you how to double crochet in the chain 2, okay? Okay, I'm at the end of row 12 and here you can see that I have 1, 2, double crochet left and then this chain 2. So I'm just gonna finish my two last double crochet, my two double crochet. Okay, and then here at the end, we're gonna work a double crochet into this chain two. And the reason for this is because we're not working in the round anymore and we count the chain two as a stitch. So we will have to work um, another double crochet into this chain two, and this is also the reason why we always loosen up our second chain because if you not loosen it up the second chain will be very small and it's gonna be very hard to insert your hook and crochet in so you can see here that we loosen up our second chain and you will see this very big hole right under this loops right so here is where you want to insert your hook, right under there, okay? So, double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our last double crochet. Okay, now moving on, chain two, loosen up our second chain, turn our work, and move on to row 13. But the process will be just the same there's nothing new, so follow the pattern that I put on the screen for you, okay? And remember to work your first double crochet into the second stitch, not this first stitch, because we already have this chain two here, okay? Okay, so as you can see here, this might happen sometime. You run out of your working yarn and you need to join the new ball of yarn in. My favorite way to join yarn is using the magic knot. I'm gonna do it quickly here, but I have a separate video showing you in detail on how to work the magic knot to join yarn. So if you need that, I put a card right in the corner of the screen or you can find the link in the description down below, okay? As you can see here, the magic knot, it's really nice and neat and you can cut really close to the knot and it's still very secure and you can keep going with your project. So I'm at the end of row 15, I have 3 stitches left, I'm gonna do that. And then this last stitch into this chain 2. Okay, now as usual, we're gonna chain 2 with a loose second chain and turn our work. Now from row 16 to row 23, we're gonna open up the slit by decreasing one stitch on each row. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? Follow the pattern, we're gonna work our first half double crochet into the second stitch as usual and then we're gonna decrease one stitch by working two stitches into one stitch and to do that you're gonna work a double crochet as usual for this one yarn over insert your hook draw our loop yarn over pull through two but you're not gonna finish this stitch and keep these two loops on your hook okay you want to keep it unfinished like this now we're gonna work an unfinished double crochet just like that into this next one so yarn over Insert your hook, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through two, and you will see that now you have three loops left on your hook. Okay, now you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, and that's how we decrease 
one stitch by working two stitch into one stitch. You can see here that these two stitches has only one V on top of it, okay? Now, we're gonna work double crochet into each stitch until the end just the same way as we did before and then the process is gonna be just the same we're gonna decrease one stitch in the beginning of each row from row 16 and there's nothing new so you can follow the pattern that I put on the screen for you, okay? Alright, I'm at the end of row 23 and I feel like this length is perfect for me, it's long enough for me so I'm gonna work only one more row and I'm gonna change color for my last row and I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? But in case you want this skirt to be longer or you want to open up this uh, slit a little bit more then you actually can uh, work a few more rows of opening the slit by just decrease one stitch at the beginning of each row or if you don't want the slit to, to open up you can just add more rows of uh, double crochet into each stitch without decreasing any stitches um, yeah and if you feel like this is just the perfect length um, like me, then we can now move on to switching color for the last row and then I'll show you how to lace up and then make the closure drawstring for the waistline, okay? So for this last row, I'm gonna use this mohair yarn um, Again, this yarn, it's not recommended for uh, beginners, especially absolute beginners because they might be frustrating to crochet with. If you are not fairly uh, comfortable with crochet, it will be very hard to see the stitches when you're working with mohair. But if you feel like you're comfortable enough after working all this, um, the rest of this skirt, then you can try it out. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how I change my color. Okay, so as you can see here, I have finished row 23 and here is the last stitch I work in the second chain say in the loosen up second chain right uh, I'm just gonna frog out to show you how it's like a little bit so this is the end of row 23 and I'm just gonna finish this stitches this last stitch into the loosen up second chain like that, okay? And now to switch color, take your new color like this and then you put this yarn through the loop on your hook like that. Now you can hold on to this previous yarn and pull a little bit and then what you wanna do is that you gonna tight, keep this loop on your hook, okay? And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna tight this tilt. We want this tilt to be a little bit longer so that we can weave it in later, okay? We're gonna tie this tail together with this previous yarn, okay? Just make a simple knot like this, right? Okay, now you can cut this previous yarn, but leave a long enough tail so that you can weave it in later, okay? Now what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna chain two, and this is gonna be our last row, so it, it's not necessary for us to loosen up our second chain because we won't have to work any more double crochet in there. But if this is not your last row because you want it to be longer or, some, or something, then remember to loosen up second chain, okay? Now, as usual, we're gonna turn our work and work double crochet into each stitch across until the end and I'm gonna meet you right here at the end to show you how to bind off, okay?
all right so i have two stitches left on my last row and i'm just gonna do that okay that is my last stitch now to bind off it's very simple you're just gonna chain one leave this loop cut to leave along enough tails to weave in later and then pull this loop out and then just close this tail up and that's it that's how we bind off and now I'm gonna show you how I do the lace up chain you're just gonna repeat the same thing when you work up the chain make a slip knot put the slip knot on your hook and then yarn over pull through to make chains and this chain need to be very long like long enough to lace up this slit and then if you want to wrap it around your tie like what I did it need to be really long so you can follow the suggestion length that I put on the screen or find out the the chain that it's long enough for you okay all right so this is a really long chain so what i like to do is that i just fold this chain into four like this and then i measure this and this is about 24 inches and i want my chain to be 100 inches so i'm just gonna put a little bit more chain until my fold in four chain it's 25 inches so that the whole chain would be a hundred inches all right and when you have it you, what you can do is that you just gonna cut and then pull this loop out and tie this up okay and just really make sure that it's tight really tighten up and then we can cut really close to this knot right here like that just leave a little bit so that it won't um you know undone by itself and we're gonna do the same to the other end like that and cut okay now we're gonna do the drawstring closure for the waistline and it's and it's basically the same thing we're just gonna make a long enough um chain and this chain length depends on the, the measurement of your waist so however long your waist measurement is you just want to make a chain that it's two times longer than that so I'm just gonna make a, a chain until when I fold it in half and wrap it around my waist it's fit perfectly that's it and just make a chain okay and i'm gonna meet you right when i'm finished this chain to show you how i put on this chain for the waistline so that we can can kind of make it like a hidden one a hidden drawstring in the back and then how to lace up this lid okay when you fold this in half and wrap it around your waist it should fit perfectly so this should be your waist measurement so if you're making this skirt for someone else and you should have their waist measurement so that the whole chain should be two times longer than the waist measurement okay now i'm gonna show you how to put on this drawstring so that it's hidden inside the piece so what you want to do is that you can actually choose which is the wrong side of the skirt and which is the right side of the skirt for me it doesn't matter because um it's just the same thing both sides look the same for me but for some yarn the two sides looks different so you can really choose which side you want it to be the front okay and then if this is your front side you will determine where it's the center of your skirt so usually mine it's like this right so this is gonna be the center and I'm gonna put this 
chain into my yarn needle. You can actually do this without this yarn needle by just putting this um, chain into the stitches because the space between the stitches is really big so you can do it like with just like this but I feel like it's quicker to do this with a yarn needle so I'm just gonna put it in like this and then I'm gonna put it in here and here and here so make sure that um, this chain it's going under this uh, front post double crochet from the front okay so from the back this is the back post double crochet so you want the chain to be under this front post double crochet so that it's kind of invisible from the front of the skirt because if you put it the other way like this it will be visible right and you're just gonna go up and down Okay, so okay, so I'm close to um, the end. Just gonna do that, and here is the last space we want to go in and hold on to this, and then here you can see that we will tie this draw string inside and then put it inside of the the wrong side of the skirt and because we put it under the front post that that's why it's kind of invisible here right okay now I'm gonna show you how to lace up this slit and we're gonna start from this row right before where the slit start okay so right here you find this middle stitch and we're gonna put it uh, put this ends into the space next to this stitch like this put one in here and then the other one in the next one, um, space and we're gonna all hold on to this ends like this and pull so that the two strings are even okay like that okay we're just gonna put this string um, across, across each other like this um, just like how we lace up our shoelace okay so I'm gonna skip a row and then put it in the next row so here I'm gonna skip this one and put this string into this next one and we want this two to cross each other like this okay so skip this one and put it in this one and then the same to the other string here skip this row and put it in the next row right here okay right into this very first space of the row okay and like that oopsie what is happening okay here like that right and then again we want this to cross each other and then we skip this row put it in the next row again this one too skip this one put it in here and again cross each other Repeat the same thing, skip one row.
All right, so I'm close to the end, and I, I'm just gonna have to put the lace into this two last space. But it depends on the number of your rows. Maybe you work it a little longer, and you have, and at the end you will have three rows. So what you're gonna do is that you keep going, skip a space. And then put it in the next one, just like what I'm doing here. Uh, and in case you have one extra row, you're just gonna cross them again and put them in the last space, in your last space. And that's it. If it gets bunched up like this, you want to pull it so that they nicer and now you can try it on and adjust the, the lace and the drawstring um, the way you want it to be so that it's perfect and snap to your body